band barred their accounts gone dark, from the chairman of the British National Party to organisations like Britain First and the National Front. Today, Facebook said these people and their groups had no place on their platform. Facebook said these were individuals and organisations who spread hate or attack or call for the exclusion of others on the basis of who they are. Those who proclaim a violent or hateful mission or are engaged in acts of hate or violence will no longer be allowed a presence on Facebook or Instagram. Facebook said it shut down the accounts at midday today, but campaigners say that it is too little, too late. We should be happy that Facebook has taken this action. This is the right thing to do. But I do think that it's coming far too late because what's happened is over the last few years, we've seen that these groups have managed to use mainstream platforms, particularly Facebook, to gain extremely large followings online. So in a certain sense, the damage has already been done. Facebook says it is working to fight what it calls online organised hate. A month ago, it permanently banned English Defence League founder Tommy Robinson, who had a huge following. Today, the EDL itself was banned. They told us our page has never had any content removed because we kept within the guidelines. Freedom of expression has been eroded. You can't express yourself unless it's the way they want you to think. They are just a private company and they're deciding the boundaries of speech. Uh, they're not doing that on the basis of law. They're doing that on the basis of a combination of the terms and conditions and political pressure. And that, that is not really the right way for us to police the boundaries of free expression. They might be banned on Facebook and Instagram, but some of the groups are still on other social media platforms. The government says that's why there needs to be a global effort to clear extremist content, and it needs to happen now. Katerina Vitozzi, Sky News.